Galatians chapter 5. Is that what I said? Okay, we'll see if that's right. I'm in Ephesians. Hallelujah. In verse 22. Somebody there? Let's speak it. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, control over self, called self-control. Against such there is no law. And those who are Christ, in other words, those who are walking in the anointing, have crucified the old man, the flesh, with its passions and desires, or its intents. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one or envying one another. We see that walking and living in the Spirit is called living out of the heart. Does everybody get it? It's called living out of the heart. So when people say, I'm being led by the Spirit or whatever, they, how can you be led if you're not filled? Amen? You can't be led if you're not filled. So it's our responsibility to stay filled with the Spirit of God. Or you won't be led, you'll be misled. And you'll be led by your old man's heart instead of the new man. In Jeremiah 17, living out of the heart, In verse 5. Is everybody there? Everybody okay? Thus says the Lord, Cursed is a man who trusts in man and makes flesh his strength, who de whose what? Heart departs from the Lord. For he shall be like a what? Shrub in the desert. And shall not see when good comes, but will inhabit the parched places in the wilderness and a salt land which is not inhabited. Uh, in other words, when a person is living out of the old man's heart, he misses what God's trying to do. Verse 7, but blesses the man who trusts in the Lord and whose hope is in the Lord for he shall be like a tree planted by the waters, which spreads out its roots by the river and will not fear when heat or trouble comes. But its leaf will continue to be green and grow and will not be anxious in the year of drought, nor will cease from yielding fruit. The heart is what? Deceitful. Now, is he talking about the new heart or the old heart? the old heart. It's deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart and test the mind. Here the mind is talking about the soul. Even to give every man according to his way and according to the fruit of his doings. Again, the natural heart of the old man is called the human heart, not the physical, but the carnal. It is deceitful and wicked. Because it carries the character of Satan. We now call the old man the, the flesh. It's full of lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, and pride of life. It's still there. It dwells within me and you. The heart is the core of our being. It is the character of our spirit or our person. Of course, now our heart is the character of our new person, Christ. It's in Christ. That is the joining and combination 
of desires and intents. Our new man, our new heart, is the joining and combination of desires and intents of the converted soul in the Holy Spirit. So what is your heart, actually? It is the character of your new man. It is your new person. And your soul, the Holy Spirit that engulfs your new man that is there joined together, is taking out of the soul the desires and intents and converting it into Christ-like. See, the Holy Spirit is taking things from your soul. He won't take things from the carnal. He takes things that are new. That's why the soul must be converted. So he waits for your cooperation to take conversion in your soul, and he begins to impart that into your heart so that we are living out of the heart, which is actually living and walking out of the Spirit. Amen? But there's a battle within you and with myself and the old man of your flesh, that the heart, there's a battle over heart position. So if we're living out of the heart, we're living out of God's love. We're expressing the Christ character, not the old character. Amen? Amen. And again, this is in the Holy Spirit. In Ezekiel 36, Verse 22, living out of the heart. You just got to be careful which one you're living out of. Well, you'll know which one by the fruit, won't you? Ezekiel 36, 22. Therefore say to the house of Israel, no one God speaks to Israel, he also speaks to us. Thus says the Lord, I do not do this for your sake, O house of Israel. I do this, <laughs> I do not do this for your sake, but for my what? Holy name's sake, which you have profaned among the nations wherever you went. Listen, we used to profane the name of the Lord, didn't we? Until we were born again. And I will sanctify my great name, which has been profaned among the nations, which you have profaned in their midst. And a nation shall know that I am the Lord, says the Lord of God. When I am howled, when I am honored, when I am expressed, when I am feared from coming out of you before their eyes. This is where you and I become, become a sign and wonder to the world. They know you've changed. They know you're no, living, no longer living out of the old heart, but out of the new heart, the new creation. Verse 24, for I will take you from among the nations, gather you out of all countries, and bring you into your own land. Then I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you shall be clean, and I will cleanse you from all your filthiness and all of your what? Idols, filthiness, touching unclean things, and idols, anything gets between you and God. Those are things that stall the growth and conversion. Those are things that will contaminate your heart which is contaminating your spirit. Remember, the only way that you can contaminate your spirit is what comes out of your mouth. The devil cannot touch your spirit. So he tries to influence you to speak to contaminate. Verse 26. He says, and I will give you a what? A new heart. And a what? A new spirit within you. And I'll take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a what? A heart of flesh. And I'll put my spirit within you and cause you to walk on my statutes. And you will keep my judgments and do them. Now that is phenomenal. He says he's going to cleanse us from all filthiness and idols if we cooperate with him. These are things that daily prevent the transforming and conversion of our hearts. And he's going to put a new heart, a new person, a new spirit within you. Be guided by the Holy Spirit, or actually you'll be in the Holy Spirit. To fulfill the process of conversion into his image and likeness. In other words, his desires and intents. That's what everything is about. What's his desire? 
What's his intent? When we ask the Lord, show me your glory, what are we actually asking him to show us? His heart. Proverbs 4. Proverbs 4. Living out of the heart is actually living and walking in the Spirit. Oh, hallelujah. Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 20. Mm. Everybody there? Let's speak it. My son, give attention to my words and incline your ear to my sayings. And do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it springs the what? The issues of life. Put away from you deceitful mouth. Why? Now he's ta talking about the mouth, because your mouth, my mouth, is the only thing that contaminates your spirit, man, which then affects your heart. And put perverse lips far from you. Yet your, let your eyes look straight ahead and your eyelids look right before you. Ponder the path of your feet and let all your ways be established. And do not turn to the right or left and remove your foot from all evil. In other words, keep your heart guided with the words of life his life, and protected from the words of self, man, the enemy. Your words contaminate your spirit. Your heart is the character of your spirit, your new man. We are required to live out of the heart, what we call, or out of the spirit, not out of the head of carnality. We are required to. Remember, God is raising up a headless warrior we are becoming a headless warrior to infiltrate those that are still living out of their head cannot infiltrate they get too easily distracted the cares of the world are too much for them they're still doing their will their way and they're not seeking god with all of their heart psalm 7 Psalm 7. Verse 6. Hallelujah. Let's speak it. Arise, O Lord, in your anger. Lift yourself up because of the rage of my enemies. Rise up for me to... The judgment you have commanded. So the congregation of the people should surround you. For their sakes, therefore, return on high. The Lord will judge the peoples. Judge me, O Lord, according to my righteousness and according to my integrity within me. Oh, let the wickedness of the wicked come to a what? An end, but establish the just. For the righteous God tests the hearts and the minds, or the hearts and the souls my defense is of god who saves the upright in heart in other words christ saves christ god tests the hearts and souls the desires and the intents he wants to know what's flowing out of there he knows but he wants you to know he wants us to know whether we're living out of selfishness or righteousness what's coming out of us amen? amen are we still living out of the carnal heart or the new created heart of Christ Jesus and the Holy Spirit 
To walk and live in the Spirit is to live out of the new heart. You know, in this, he's creating. We, not only does he create the new heart, but there's a request always. Lord, keep creating me a new heart. How many know you can contaminate your heart and God will give you a new one? You know, we've all had multiple heart surgery. <laughs> but in this, there's a place where God not only brings a new heart, but there's a place where he tries to revive it. Anybody ever have, well, no, have yeah, anybody know have had someone who has had a heart attack, right? Well, a heart attack in the spirit realm is contamination of the heart. It needs to be revived. Amen. And if that's not it, then they're waiting for a heart transplant. But God is willing to exchange our corruptible, but it's going to take something. It's going to take repentance and true repentance, and it's going to take something else. We must seek him with all of our heart to exchange our heart. Do it okay. So there's an area where he revives our new heart all the time. It involves his testing to me and you. <laughs> It says he tests us, right? Why is he testing us? To keep us revived. He's testing and challenging. He allows these to happen. To fill our new heart with wisdom, with new desires, with the pure intents, with revelations. So there's an exchange of character all the time. So you and I will be challenged, we'll be tested. Things will come before us where we have to make decisions. That decision will be made out of the old heart or the new heart. It'll be out of a heart of anxiousness or fear or out of righteousness and justice. Psalm 51. And I'm telling you, we need to live out of the heart these days. Psalm 51. In verse 10. Let's speak it. Creating me a what? A clean heart, O oh God, and renew or revive a steadfast spirit within me. And don't cast me away from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me by your generous spirit. Then I will be a sign and wonder. And I will teach transgressors your ways and sinners shall be converted to you. Again, create a clean heart and a steadfast new person in the spirit in the Holy Spirit, to lead captives who have been taken captive as a headless warrior. In Mark 7. Is everybody there? Verse 14. Mark 7, 14. Again, I will continue to express that we are hard-pressed on every side. There is evil is escalating to its highest levels. And we've got to be careful to guard our heart. In verse 14, when Jesus had called all the multitude to himself, he said to them, hear me, everyone, and understand. That's real simple. Hear me and understand. <laughs> a lot of people just say, yes, yes, yes. But see, understand means you digest and you put it to practice. Without practice, there's no understand. Verse 15. There is nothing that enters a man from outside which can defile him. But the things which come out of him, those are the things that defile him. If anyone has ears to hear, let him hear. 
When he had entered a house away from the crowd, his disciples asked him concerning the parable. And he said to them, Are you thus without understanding also? Do you not perceive that whatever enters a man from outside cannot defile him? Because it does not enter into his what? His heart, but his stomach, and eliminated, thus purifying all foods. And he said, What comes out of a man, that defiles him. For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed what? Evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lewdness, an evil eye, blasphemy, proud, foolishness. And all these thing, evil things come out from within and defile a man. Now that is powerful. Oh. <laughs> What is he talking about? He said, what defiles the heart, the old man. See, that battle between the old man and the new man is still consistent. The old man is fighting over a position, trying to express the old man's heart. And it's our responsibility to keep that old man crucified. What defiles the new heart is the old man and the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life, and the things that come out of our mouth that agree with it. Amen? Spoken. These things contaminate the new heart to live out of the head and not out of the spirit. When the heart gets contaminated, the tendency then is to live out of the head and not the spirit. Once the heart has been contaminated, there's a veil that begins to come. It's called the veil of Lucifer. Because he's trying to block everything. In Ezekiel 18, Is everybody okay? Ezekiel 18. Can offense contaminate your heart? People are easily offended. Ezekiel 18, verse 30. Is everybody there? Let's speak it together. Hallelujah. Therefore I will judge you, O house of Israel, everyone according to his ways, says the Lord. Repent and do what? And turn from all of your transgressions, those things that you've agreed, that you agreed with in the presence of evil, so that the iniquity will not be your ruin. Cast away from you all the transgressions which you have committed and get yourselves a what? A new heart and a new spirit. For why should you die, O house of Israel? For I have no pleasure in the death of one who dies, says the Lord God. Therefore, turn and live. In other words, people repent, but don't turn. Turning is repenting. First, you're acknowledging him. Lord, forgive me for being a moron. Forgive me for touching and agreeing. Forgive me for those words. Forgive me for those thoughts. I'm going to turn away from it now. But first, I've acknowledged you and who I've offended. Now I can turn away from the sin, from the transgression. And then the iniquities shall be broke. But if you haven't turned from it, then you're still in it. Amen? And the heart is still being messed with. In Acts 13. How many of y'all know God knows the secrets of the heart? <laughs> you know, evilness will revive the old heart. Associations bring impartations. In verse 16, living out of the heart. And Paul stood up and motioning with his hand said, Men of Israel and you who fear God, listen. Listen. I love that. The God of this, of, the God of this people, Israel, 
chose our fathers and exalted the people when they dwelt as strangers in the land of Egypt. And with an uplifted arm, he brought them out of it. Now for a time of about 40 years, he put up with their ways in the wilderness. And when he had destroyed seven nations in the land of Canaan, he distributed their land to them by allotment. After that, he gave them judges for about 450 years until Samuel the prophet. And afterward, they asked for a king, so God gave them Saul, the son of Kish, a man of the tribe of Benjamin, for 40 years. And when he had removed him, he raised up for them David as king, to whom also he gave testimony and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my heart, who will do all my will. Wow. From this man's seed, according to the promise, God raised up for Israel a Savior, Jesus, after John had first preached before his coming the baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. So David was a man wanting to know God's heart and was after his heart. He wanted to know God's desires and intents. Every Christian should want to know the same thing. Every one of us should always seek what is in his heart. What is your heart? Now, there's a, we know God's heart is love. We know God's heart in this is to rescue. We know, but then there's the point where what is God's heart plan for you? And there is a God heart plan for every individual. There's a broad one for Christians. Amen? Everyone, but if, if you don't seek his heart, how are you going to really know what is his plan for you personally <laughs> or sometimes even nationally? Amen? Go to uh, 1 Corinthians 13 for a moment. First Corinthians 13. <clears throat> now this is how God expresses himself in here, what he calls, because God is love. Amen? In verse 4 it says what? Love suffers long and is kind. In other words, love suffers long and doesn't react. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself, is not puffed up, does not behave rudely, does not seek its own, is not provoked or offended, thinks no evil, does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. So the process of God's love never fails. But if we're not connected to the heart of God, we will walk in the old man. Where love fails. Where love becomes lust. Where love becomes selfish. Where love becomes rude and greedy. Where love is always reacting where love takes, that's, a, that's a, a love that takes people out of position because it's a love of the world and not the love of God. And Deuteronomy 26. Remember, God couldn't use King Saul until he changed his heart. He had to give him a new heart. But then Saul contaminated his heart and God removed him. Deuteronomy 26, I believe it's first Deuteronomy. De Deuteronomy. Oh, happy days. Come on, Deuteronomy. There you go. 2616.
Let's speak it together. For all who do such things, all who behave, I'm in the wrong one, praise God. <laughs> Deuteronomy 16. <laughs> Deuteronomy 26, 16. Are we there now? Good. This day the Lord your God commands you to observe these statutes and judgments. Therefore you shall be what? Careful to observe them with all of your heart and with all of your soul. Remember we talked about all of your mind and all of your heart. It's the same, all of your soul. Today you have proclaimed the Lord to be your God and that you will walk in his ways and keep his statutes, his commandments and his judgments, and that you will obey his voice. Do you understand when you accepted Jesus Lord as Savior, this is what you committed to. I, can, I, can, I accept you as Savior, as Lord, then what you've done, if you proclaim, you've committed to this, that you will walk in his ways, that you will keep his statutes, his commandments, and his judgments, and that you will obey his voice. That's what we committed to. Verse 18. Also today the Lord has proclaimed you to be his special people, just as he promised you that you should keep all his commandments, and that he will set you high above all nations, which he has made in praise and name and in honor, and that you may be holy people to the Lord your God, just as he has spoken. With all of our heart, that's all of our intents and desires, we're to obey, we're to follow, we're to execute. Amen? We're to seek him, especially in worship. Again, too many people poop out. They quit. They never make contact. In First Chronicles 28. Oh, happy days. Chronicles, First Chronicles 28, verse 8. Living out of the heart. And such a time is needed. The word tells us to examine ourselves. If you can't ask someone else to. Most people won't do that because they're afraid they might, somebody, <laughs> they might be exposed. <laughs> Verse 8. Now therefore, in the sight of all Israel the assembly of the Lord, and in the hearing of our God, be careful to seek out all the commandments of the Lord your God, that you may possess this good land and live in it as an inheritance for your children after you forever. As for you, my son Solomon, know the God of your father and serve him with a loyal heart and with a willing mind that is living out of the new man. For the Lord searches all hearts and understands all the intent of the thoughts. If you seek him, he'll be found by you. But if you forsake him, he will forsake you or cast you off forever. Consider now, for the Lord has chosen you to build a house for the sanctuary. Be strong and do it. In other words, seek him with all of your heart and soul then you will find him. Too many, again, poop out. If you forsake him, he'll forsake you. The word says that I was afflicted when I went astray. Amen? Because we stopped forsaking him. We have been chosen as an end-time headless warrior in a corrupt world and in a nation to build the house of Christ, to bring his kingdom in and tear down Satan's evil influences. We must be strong in the Lord with a pure heart to fulfill our mission. Now I'm going to close at Matthew 6. Luke 
living out of the heart, not out of the mind. Matthew 6, verse 19. See, there's a lot of people that can speak it, but they can't walk it. They like to preach it, but they can't walk it. And there's no victory. No victory. Again, we're called to infiltrate Satan's kingdom, tear down strongholds, rescue those who have been taken captive, and expand the kingdom of Christ by taking territory. In verse 19, Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The lamp of the body is the eye. If therefore your eye is good, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in you is darkness, how great is that darkness? No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God in mammon or money. Therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body. And what you will put on is not life more than food and the body more than clothing. Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather in the barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. As <laughs> Are you not more valuable than them? Which of you, by worrying, can add one cubic of a stature? So why do you worry about clothing and consider the lilies of the field and how they grow? They neither toil nor spin. And yet I say to you that even Solomon in his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Now if God so clothes the grass of the field which today is and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O oh, you little faith? Therefore don't worry saying what will we eat, what will we drink, what will we wear, what kind of job do I need, such and such and such. For after all these things the worldly ones look for. But your heavenly Father knows what you need. And so he says something here. He says, here's the clue. Here's, here's the conclusion. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all things are going to be coming to you. Bottom line. Maintain a clean heart, pure hands, a pure heart. And when you blow it, get rid of it. Turn, repent, and exchange it out. Therefore, don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Remember, God is seeking out those who are after his heart. And that is the main thing. If you're not a man or a woman after his heart, then where is your heart? Amen? Thank you, Jesus. Father, we are honored and blessed for your word. You are preparing us. You are warning us. To maintain a pure heart, not to be men pleasers, but to be God pleasers. So, Lord, in this, we commit to you our spirit, soul, body, our flesh, our will, our desires, our intents, and our heart, that you may purify it, strengthen our inner man, continue to convert our soul, and crucify our flesh that your kingdom, your presence, and your glory, and your character would be expressed through each and every one of us. In Jesus' name.